Mark my words, Mocha Cho. And mark them well. I don't know how, and I don't know when, but I will exact vengeance. Curb Your Enthusiasm has had an amazing run. It's now in its 12th and supposedly final season. In honor of that, and because there's so many lessons here, dropping a video every week that's examining economic lessons in Curb Your Enthusiasm. In this one, we look at the Spite Store, Latte Larry's versus Mocha Joe's. Let's watch the first scene which gives some motivation to starting up the store. Mo Mocha Joe's. Mocha Joe, I know Mocha Joe. You want some coffee? Sure. Okay. Let's, let's go in here. Get a little latte. Thanks so much, I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Whoa! Oh, Laugh boy, from oh, the boy. past. <laughs> Larry Mocha David. Mocha Joe. Wow. Long time no see, <laughs> man. Hey. What are you doing here? What's your name? Leon. Leon, nice to meet you. This is unreal. You believe it, huh? What can I get you guys? I'll get us, you have scones? Yeah, right there, they're beautiful. Great, I'll have a scone and a uh, cup of coffee. A cup of coffee and a scone, what about you, Leon? You get a latte. All yeah. right, one scone, a coffee, a latte, that's eleven fifty. Right, there you go, keep the change. Oh, thanks for the tip, appreciate it. A latte and a coffee, please? Thank you. Mm. It's a little soft. What, the scone? Yeah, scones are supposed to be hard. This is like a muffin. Well, n not really. It's supposed to be fresh. Yeah, fresh, hard. Well, that's a fresh scone. I'm not quite sure you know what a scone is, Mocha Joe. Oh, I know what a scone is. Do you? Yeah. You may have a looser definition of scone than I do. I don't think it's really open to interpretation, though. You want the scone or not? Yeah, I'll keep the scone slash muffin. So you're going to keep the scone? Yeah, muffin. Yeah. Enjoy the scone, Larry. Are you got any danishes? Uh, no. Fucking up. <sighs> Next. Oh my God. Look at this table. Wow. You believe it? Wow. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Mocha Joe. Yeah. Check out this table. Yeah? <laughs> it's a what? You got a wobbly table here. Yeah, well, stop moving it. Stop moving it. It's uh, every time I, 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 I lean on it, it's going to move. Put your foot on it like everybody else does. I'm going to sit with my foot on the table? Yeah, that's how you hold it down. The floor's a wobbly. Mocha Joe, can I give you a little advice? Yeah. Nobody likes a wobbly table. Fastest way to lose customers is with wobbly tables. I got an uncle with a wobbly leg. I can't stand that motherfucker. Leaning on shit all the time. Hmm. <sighs> Taste your coffee. Cold. Cold. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, Mocha Joe. What? This is cold coffee. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. That coffee. It's not cold. Is your, is your coffee cold? Your coffee's hot, right? Look, man, we don't want to be fucking haters right now, but this shit's cold. Can, can, I get an, an, can I get a new cup? No. So you're no. not going to give me a new cup? No, because that's a hot cup of coffee. It was hot when I gave it to that's you. That's a hot cup of coffee? It's a hot cup of coffee. It was hot when would I gave it to you. Would you stick your nose in a hot cup of coffee? Why would you stick your nose because in a I cup of coffee? Because I want to prove to you that it's cold coffee. Watch this. That's cold coffee. That doesn't prove anything it except does. that you're an old, bald nut. What did you say to me? You heard me. Now get out, you old ball f With pleasure. You think I want to sit here with a wobbly table and drink cold black coffee? Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, good. Get out. Hey. Okay, interesting initial scene here. So Larry and Leon go to Mocha Joe's and get really terrible service at Mocha Joe's. Wobbly table, bad scone, the coffee's not hot, and then the owner's pretty rude about everything on top of that. After this, right, Larry's been kicked out and says he'll never go back. And some of his friends even indicate that they might join along. Let's look at a next scene right now between Larry Lewis and Mocha Joe. Hey, stop it. What are you, a f goose? Okay, that's not hot coffee, okay? If that was hot coffee, I, I would have burned my nose. Who asked for a nose test? I didn't want a nose test. What, are you out of your mind? Hey, uh -huh. what the hell is going on here? Is he bothering you, Mr. Yes, Lewis? Yes, he's bothering me. Oh, really? Yeah, really. You know what, Larry? Get out. Huh. This is what it's come to. You're banned. For life. Right. I never want to see you in here again. Is that so? Yes, you're banned. Banned! Get out! With pleasure. Mark my words, Mocha Joe. 
and mark them well. I don't know how, and I don't know when, but I will exact vengeance. As God is my witness, I will bring you to the brink of extinction, or I will die trying. Happy New Year, Mocha Joe! Happy New Year, Larry! Hey, Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year. Okay, so now he's not just kicked out, but he's banned for life, and he's going to exact vengeance. What is the vengeance he decides to exact? Well, he wants to start his own coffee shop. And that gives us a good chance to begin the discussion of how spite actually plays into some decisions. Uh, in game theory and within economics, when we're looking at what are rational decisions being made, you think of the payoffs. Often the payoffs are monetary. But there are certainly non-monetary payouts in the world, many of them, right? The, you know, many relationships are built not on monetary payouts, but on non-monetary payouts. Well, spite can factor into things on some of these. A classic example of where spite factors in is what's called the ultimatum game. Ultimatum game, one person gets to propose how money is split and the other person can take it or leave it. And sometimes we see in the ultimatum game, people will leave money on the table if they don't think it's a fair split. Like the value of spiting the other per of spite, you know, punishing the other person is worth enough where they're not gonna take the free money because the free money isn't going to compensate them enough as the joy they get from punishing somebody else. And we see that in this particular story that Larry wants to punish um, Mocha Joes. Uh, let's remember for some context here, uh, you know, this is about Larry David's life, but it's, you know, fictionalized. But Larry David in this show it still is Larry David who wrote Seinfeld and is pretty wealthy, right? Getting all of those residual checks, he doesn't need the money. Uh, purely on a monetary point of view, this is probably a horrible investment, right? He could write new shows. He could do a whole lot of things that would pay him more money than this. But this is what's going to give him joy. Uh, this is going to punish. And that leads to the, de you know, the decision. Let's start up a store. Let's now go to see what Larry does to try to make the store a little bit better. And that'll lead to the next lesson within the battle between Latte Larry and Mocha Joe. Story in New York, were you not? Thank you. Have a seat. Um, so, you were the pastry chef at the Waldorf Astoria in New York, were you not? It's been a while, a long time ago. What a hotel. I mean, if there were a couple of problems, like the air conditioning was not great, I have to say. I like a cold room, Chulo, you know, 64 degrees, and the mm. tub was too small. Mm. But besides that, what I loved about it was every morning I'd go downstairs to the restaurant and I'd have a cup of coffee and a scone. And those scones were the best scones I've ever had anywhere in my... I've never forgotten them. Well, I was known for my scones. <laughs> anyway, I'm opening up a coffee shop, and I need you to make me those scones. I'm sorry, I haven't touched a whisk 20 years. See, Chula, the thing is, there's this man. He's got this coffee place. He's kicked me out of it. He's banned me from it. And I opened up a place next door to his. I've sworn revenge, and with your help, Maybe I can get it. Oh, Spite Store. Spite Store, right. Well, what's this guy's name anyway? He goes by the name of Mocha Joe. Did you say Mocha Joe? You know him? Nasty mother. What you think? Pretty good. <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty good. Now I want to show you the thing I'm most proud of. That's what I want to see. Welcome to the 21st century bathroom. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Splash free. Yep. Look, first you got the snowshoes down there. You step on those. See how it lifts up? Okay, now watch this. You set it to your level of where your penis is. Uh-huh. I feel like I'm with Howard Hughes right before the nails go big. <laughs> no, I do. 
It's cool, though. It's uh, it's quite an advancement. I'm so proud of these boys. You should be. I am. And where's Look the can? It. Where's the shitter? No, no such thing. Well, what if someone has to? What if someone has to? Well, let, let them go home. Then you lose customers. Who cares? I'd rather have an old coffee buyer than a defecator. How about the ladies? What do they got? Let me show you. Okay. Look, look at this. Look at this. See, this is smart. The ladies get to sit down. This makes sense. No, no, no. They don't sit. They squat. I don't get it. Women don't want to sit. They're very envious that we can. They have, they have pee envy, actually. Look what I've done for them. Okay. See? You grab onto these bars. The knees go in here. They don't touch anything. They're not touching. That's what they don't like. They don't like touching the toilet. It's like a Pilates class, though. Is it hard? You don't want to go too much longer than a pee time. I wouldn't stay here all day. And the pants go where? You know, I don't know. Whatever, whatever they do with them. C come and join me. Settle up. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Just grab on here? Yeah, grab on here. Let's see how we do it. Yeah. Oh, this one feels yeah, good. Yeah. This is empowering. Yeah. Just this body position makes me feel strong. I'm really you? I'm tired. Did you consult women on this? No. They'll love this, though. Oh, yeah. I yeah. like the feeling here. Yeah, okay. The girl's gonna love it. My legs are killing me. Uh, oh. <sighs> you know, I got one more idea. You're kidding me. No. One more? Okay. This is a tremendous idea. A cup, mm -hmm. okay, that keeps coffee hot. Mm -hmm. Like a thermos. No, not a thermos. No. A cup itself. Heat. Heat. Uh -huh. It's hot. You got plans? Well, there's no plans. I don't, I don't uh, you know, how am I going to do it? I need an inventor. I know a guy. He's like a patent guy. He's got like 45 patents. Larry's taking this really seriously, right? So he's going to start Latte Larry's. He recruits somebody who can make scones that are far better. He looks for uh, hot coffee, you know, ways to keep the coffee hot. Those to me seem like pretty reasonable. And then to me, what seemed like absolutely ridiculous things with the bathroom, but he's putting his thoughts into this, right? He's trying to create a competition. And this leads to a good description of a type of competitive market, and that is a monopolistically competitive market. In principles of economics, like the two markets we usually begin with are the two extreme markets. One is perfect competition, and the other is a monopoly. Perfect competition. There are a lot of small firms, and they're all selling the exact same thing. And it's very simple to get into and out of the market. So you end up getting almost no profits whatsoever because everybody's selling the exact same thing. Uh, prices go down, though, to the absolute marginal cost. Monopoly is the opposite, right? One firm has enormous pricing power. Uh, monopolistic competition is many firms that are small, and you can get into and out of a market reasonably easy, but the products are a bit different. The product differentiation is there, and coffee shops would be a good example, right? Starbucks coffee is different than Dunkin's coffee, and it would be different than what you could pick up at McDonald's or your local gas station or your local coffee shop or wherever else you may get a hot cup of coffee. These are all slightly different, and they all offer slightly different amenities or other products or services with them. It's a great example of monopolistic competition. What is great about monopolistic competition, a uh, couple things. One, because the firms are competing against each other, there's some pressure to keep prices in line. In a, with a monopoly, the monopolist is thinking about what is the profit maximizing price, and that could often be quite a bit higher given it's only one firm. But with competition, You've got to keep your prices in line. Even if somebody thinks your product is better, if your pricing is out of line, they might go somewhere else. Uh, for example, if you think that um, for lunch you would most want tacos, Taco Bell, let's say. But if Taco Bell is going to cost $12 in a meal and a similar, similar sized meal, I won't say similar tasting, but a similar sized meal that would fill you up at McDonald's might be $8. You know, you might choose to save four dollars and and go get the other meal, or you know, fast food restaurants are a wonderful example of monopolistically competitive uh, firms or a monopolistically competitive industry, just like coffee shops. But there's pricing pressure, so that consumers are going to be looking at the price along with everything else, and price usually is going to be somewhat reasonable um, relative to what the costs are for the for the firm. Uh, a second. Thing that's nice about monopolistic competition 
is that you do um, you can end up seeing innovations because the products aren't identical. Consumers might be willing to pay more for a product or service that's a little bit better. And that is exactly what Larry's trying to do. I think the bathroom ideas he has are absolutely insane. Just ridiculous. But, hey, it's a private entrepreneur trying something different. Uh, there are a lot of products I would have said that is insane and that would never work. And then they come to market and people love it. Um, and when the entrepreneur is taking that risk, betting on themselves on that, it's, it's something we'd love to see in society. Uh, studies shown over and over entrepreneurs bring enormous value to society, not in terms of even just the profits they might make, but in terms of how much better off everybody else is because of new products and inventions. So monopolist the competition has several good features. Now we've seen the planning part. Let's look at a, a short, and this will be the final clip that we show from the show, the Latte Larry versus Mocha Joe Coffee Wars. We'll go to that clip right now. You get a dollar thirty a cup? We're not gonna make any money doing that. What choice that. do I have? Put in some coat rack. No way. It's Southern One California. Coat. We don't need a coat rack. All right, Come then at least fix your scones, Joe. Whoa, whoa, you eat them like they're going out of style. You eat them guys, all the time. Hey, guys. Keep it down. You're disturbing the customers. We've never they're had a problem with the scones before. No, they're we've never balls. had a problem with them before. Come in, come in. Enjoy the low prices. Hey, have you tried Mocha Joe's? Hey, remember me, Ted Danson? Cheers. Becker, cheers, any, you remember me? Oh, just wonderful, I love the pricing and how it changes here. First, we notice what are called flexible prices. Often, uh, prices have been thought to say there might be sticky prices and why might there be inflation or why might you have market inefficiencies as prices can't change too easily because you might have a sign that has the prices on here. Well, here, they have a sign and they just cross it out with a marker. So that, that's pretty interesting. But the stores side by side, we really do see how the price matters, right? You have Mocha Joe's and Latte Larry's. Latte Larry had committed would be cheaper than Mocha Joe's. You know, was going to not, was going to make sure they had a cheaper cup of coffee to bring people in. Because once again, it's a spite store. The profits don't matter quite as much to Latte Larry's. But if the price is lower, that's going to drive consumer traffic. And you then see Mocha Joe realizing, well, if they're going to charge more, I've got to go ahead and charge a little bit less. So the lower prices are going to drive traffic. You can see Latte Larry charges a low price. Mocha Joe realizes he has to charge a lower price to keep up. And the prices drop. Now, this is monopolistically competitive firms. They could, in theory, have slightly different prices. Given, though, they are right next to each other, one of the products really better, be quite a bit better than the other, in order to encourage people to pay more. Now, in a perfectly competitive market, you would end up seeing the exact same price because the products are indeed the same. And that price would end up driving all the way down until the cost basically the lowest cost where the owners of the stores could make you know, a reasonable income, but only as much as essentially the next best alternative. It's called zero profits, and it doesn't mean earning no money at all, but it means only earning as much as the next best alternative would bring in. There's not excess profits. Well, we see a pretty good example of the price being driven down there likely aren't any excess profits here with Mocha Joe's and Latte Larry's right next to each other. 
So I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am dropping videos that will be discussing economic lessons from Curb Your Enthusiasm uh, weekly throughout the final season. So please like and subscribe and you will uh, you'll get to see when the next ones drop. This one, fantastic look at both competition and thinking about spite and how it influences decision making. Until next time, I uh, hope you all have a good week. See you in the next video.